Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today's video, I am going to be doing a little something different with Yu-Gi-Oh cards. So if you guys don't know, I'm a huge, huge Yu-Gi-Oh fan. I grew up on Yu-Gi-Oh, played Yu-Gi-Oh all the time growing up as a kid. And there was one, um, one game that I played a lot. I don't remember the game growing up as a kid, but there's one that I used to play all the time online. Um, it's called Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy The Duelist. They have the newer ones. Um, I forget the name of the newer ones, but there was kind of like a three deck or three card, um, uh, rule. And, uh, you know, you got the spell cards, you got the, the three card rule. Uh, it's a newer game. You know, they had the new, uh, um, mechanics or whatever you want to call it. Um, it was actually pretty good. I had fun with it. You could actually, it was actually a mobile game first. Um, and of course it's made by Konami, but it's, it's a mobile, it was a mobile game. Then they brought it down to console. Um, I played it for a while. I had an absolute blast playing it, but I used to play Legacy the Duelist. And the reason why I stopped playing Legacy the Duelist is because I had one final last duel. That was kind of like the duel to like end it all. It was like, okay, that's it. I'm done. Um, I had a lot of fair share battles on there. I had a lot of times where I lost a lot of good battles that I went through. But this one was like the real battle where I could have got... So the person I was playing, um, that person could have wiped me out in two moves. She had two times to wipe me out. Unfortunately, the card that she used couldn't let her attack on one turn. Um, I used to play duels um, with 12,000 um, life points instead of 8,000. I know a lot of people like 8,000, like the fast duels. I like the um, well-timed out duels, duels that make you think. So I used 12,000. So if it wasn't for the 12,000 life points, I probably could have lost that duel. Um, but... It was the fact that this dude was so crazy and went down to the end. So, yeah. So, that was the little backstory on it. I am going to play this, play that duel in the video and give, like, a, my thoughts on it. Give, like, an overview on it as I go through it and tell you, like, certain spots or uh, certain times in the duel where I could point out the mistake that person made. And then uh, some mistakes I've made at the end, like the ending of it, because this dude was absolutely crazy how it just went, it, it goes down all the way to the end. Uh, it's just, it's it's nuts. It's a crazy duel. So hope you guys enjoy that. Like I said, I will be unboxing him. This deck has, or this uh, box has all the three um, uh Egyptian God cards, I believe. And I believe it has other decks to go with it. So like I said, I will be unboxing them at the end of the video. So hope you guys enjoy that. Here it is, guys. Here is the special video. Hope you guys enjoy this. This is going to be amazing. So like I said, huge fan of Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Duelist. So this is basically my last duel where I just completely stopped playing the game. So it was an amazing battle with this person. As you can see that person's name. I don't know this person. After dueling them, they sent me a friend request. Uh, because this dude is crazy. So I don't know if I said this a little bit earlier on in the video. But so in this duel, this person could have wiped me out. You guys are definitely going to see. There was a couple times where if that person would have made a certain moves... Definitely could have been wiped out, but the problem with Yu-Gi-Oh! is if you're not quick to pull the trigger, and you could get you could lose yourself. So, as you guys can tell, we both have twelve thousand life points. When I play, I play by twelve thousand instead of um, eight thousand, just because I like the prolonged duels. I just don't want it to end real quick because this game you can't get one shot it a lot, but. It's pretty awesome. So I use the field spell card. Uh, the type of deck I am using is fairy type. Uh, basically the arcana monsters. So this card, that card that I hovered above, 
that you special summon any fairy type. Don't matter any. It doesn't matter their the attribute. You just can't have a monster on the field, and it doesn't matter the the level or the attack power. So you see, I put in my Athena. Um, so every time I special summon a fairy monster on the field, or if I uh, bring back from the dead, or I think if I summon, um, she takes 600 life points away from that somebody. And you see that attack was a really risky move because I don't know what that phase down could be. A lot of people, when they play Legacy of the Duelist, they use Mirror Force. <laughs> Nope, oh, and then my face onto this person's face. But yeah, so I use the Arcana monsters, which are, it's a real strong deck if you know how to use them. Uh, if you're facing somebody that uses a lot of spell cards, it could it can be a problem. But this deck is built to uh, to last anybody. So here it is right here. Uh, this person is taking a sweet time as you guys can see but the person who played that brings a monster back from the dead as you can tell for that card you know what type of deck he's using he is going to try to use Jinzo so this person was using the Jinzo deck uh, as you can tell uh, I was reading a lot of things too sometimes since there's so many cards in Yu-Gi-Oh you don't remember each every card so it's always important to read them but this person was able to summon not one not two but three Jinzos real real strong Jinzo is real strong against trap cards uh, not against spells but if you if you person that, that uses trap cards a lot Jinzo is one of the worst cards to see played on the field but yeah, unfortunately, my Athena has enough attack power to last Jinzo. So this person is probably doing an ultimatum on whether he should special summon to bring out stronger monsters to face. Uh, the thing about that card that's getting sent to the graveyard right now is called Jinzo Returner. So he can always bring back Jinzo from the dead. So yeah, this deck is real, real strong. So, as you can see, he is special summoning. Now, putting two gentle monsters together. Um, yeah. Real, real strong. So, he XYZ summon. It's when you have two of the same um, levels. So, if you got two level sixes, you could summon whoever. It's an XYZ monster that has two level six. So this is the part where I was talking about with that card right there. He summons that that effect monster casket. The instant fusion is a real real big risky move. Yeah, it's real real strong, but you cannot attack on the first turn. And this was kind of interesting that he went with that. I get what he was trying to do. He was he or she. I don't know if he was a he or she, but he's trying to wipe basically wipe me out in one one attack. So, um, like I said, he wasn't playing his cards right. I'm just gonna say he. If it was a if it's a girl, I apologize. But you guys can see every time you summon any fairy type, he's just losing attack points. So. <laughs> That's another pesky card too for people. As you can see, you go straight into attack mode. I got zero attack points. Like I said earlier, the instant fusion forces uh, that one monster that he fusion that he used that card with cannot attack on the first turn. But it is enough. He has enough monsters to do real, real bad damage. Most people would probably quit, but not me. You gotta have the heart of the cards. So he just is attacking my, attacking me. I got nothing to defend myself with. 
like I said, down to 3,800. With, he got basically five monsters. Now, if you're watching this, you're probably thinking, oh, my God, like, this guy sucks. He don't know what he's doing. But, again, he special summons to another casket. So, this is the another move. This is the big move I was talking about right here. If this guy, and I'm going to just let it play out before I say anything. So, like I said, casket, you could, uh, you he, what he could have did, instead of doing this special summon, he could have had this casket return my um, summon card, the last summon card I have on the field, and return it to the deck. Instead, he went with the Utopia monster. Which is a good monster as well. It's real, real strong. But it was a real bad mood. A uh, bad move for him because now I got the heart of the cards. I put my Light Barrier. So the Light Barrier with Arcane Forge monsters, you're not familiar with them. Uh, they are either, they flip a coin when they're summoned. And uh, it depends on the effect of the monsters. So with my, my my card, I was able to summon the world. Now that was huge. That was real huge. So with um, my field spell on the first turn, uh, it lets me pick. It lets me pick any coin I want. So, um, like I said, uh, most of the time with the Arcana monsters, the tails are the worst for you. So, like I said, to gamble if you don't have that fail spell card. But this is what I mean where sometimes the gamble could pay off. So, I have the world. I instantly go in to, to kill. Yeah, and that is a strong card too. But you guys are going to see how crazy I get myself out of this jam. It's amazing, so I decided to take out that card because that's a real strong card. And that's the best card. That's the best part about that fill spell card is if you destroy a monster, it lets you gain attack points. So that's why I'm saying I was not worried. That was just me testing it out to see how the hell am I going to get rid of that card. Because that card, if you attack it, it lets you gain control of the monster for that turn. Also, with the world, so the best thing about the world is that its effect, if you have two arcano monsters, you could activate the effect if you have heads to where you could skip that person's turn. So, you know, that person was absolutely mad. And this is what I mean. It's the gamble right here. So... Unfortunately, it flipped tails, and I had to force to take a gamble. And unfortunately, I pooped tails, so kind of sucks. Luckily for me, it's just enough to get that Jinzo out of there. <laughs> so you guys could see how crazy how he had five monsters on the field. I was basically almost finished and just came back and just... Uh, I don't know what I was thinking there. My turn was over. <laughs> Just absolutely craziness. I cannot activate the world unless I want to get rid of the world, which would be a horrible move. So I just decide to end my turn and ship it back to him. Now, this is when it gets absolutely starts to get crazy because... This guy still has 10,000 life points, even though he's down to his last monster. And then there's the ultimate kill, which is the Rakiki, that lets you destroy your opponent's monsters. And then he has a Foolish Burial. So you already know what he's trying to bring back. Like I said, he's playing the Jinzo deck. So he's trying to bring back that bad boy. So right now, it's not really looking too good for me. So like I said, he brings back the Jinzo.
instantly goes for the attack since I am right open I really can't defend myself there is a card unfortunately it's called Gores um, that lets you also that card is only let you uh, returner lets you bring it back for one turn and lucky enough I was able to pull the card uh, the exact card that I absolutely needed so here's my fill spell card I let you summon any type of monster and there it is right there the moon so with the moon it lets you after every at the end of the turn let you summon to tokens so that definitely comes in handy especially with the arcane force monsters because if you guys could see one of the big monsters I still have in my hand is that big gigantic arcane force dragon which trust me that dude did not want to see on that field so lucky enough he's <laughs> determining what to do so like I said If you guys want to read it off to the side while this guy is waiting, that's the only thing about Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Duelist. You absolutely have to wait until that person is finished. So he decides to bring in Armageddon Knight. And what the Armageddon Knight lets you do is send Dark Monster into your graveyard. So once again, you know he was bringing out the Jinzo. And this is what I mean. Genzo could get pesky. <laughs> so he's trying to special summon. And there's the card that nobody wants to see. The most annoying annoyingest card in Yu-Gi-Oh! If you played Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Duelist, you will see the Silent Horror arc. So he uses XYZ summons. If you throw away two of the cards that you used for material, it lets you take your opponent's monster. The worst thing you want to see. Also, since I had no monsters, I was just open for an attack. Now, this is when the heart of the cards come in. <laughs> I pulled... Dimensional Prison. So if you guys don't know Dimensional Prison. What that does is if your opponent attacks. You have you can send that card to the, to the ban. So if you guys don't know the ban is. Uh, you can't get it back. There are spell cards that can bring back ban monsters. But instead of sending it to the graveyard. It gets sent to the ban list. Or the ban zone. So then I am going to attack him, but since he has my monster and with Silent Arc's effect, he doesn't get destroyed, but he does lose life points. So now here comes the most perfect part of this duel, and we're probably the biggest part of this duel that would save me from losing. It's coming up. So that card let him draw two cards. It gets sent to the graveyard. Oh, actually it doesn't. I apologize. But since, see, he attacks with that monster I kind of get rid of. And then, there it is. Sent him to the dimensional prison. That's the way to get rid of it. <laughs> and my monster is way stronger, so he can't attack and do absolutely nothing has nothing to defend himself and then there it is <laughs> so if you guys are liking this please consider hitting that like button and subscribing um not the most professional Yu-Gi-Oh duelist in the world like i said this is just a fun video uh, and this is why i like a, a duel like this is like why I just decided to stop playing. Um, if you guys would like me to do more content on this, I would definitely will. Um, but as of right now, I guess this is the last one. So obviously, I destroy his monster. I get an extra monster to attack. I 
can rip away his life points. I stuck with mine. See, I am that I'm still down 2300. So this whole basically this whole duo is living on the edge. <laughs> so, and this is where I mean this dude gets absolutely crazy because he also has the heart of the cards. Let's see what he decides to play. He is definitely strategizing. He actually has nothing, so he has to end his phase. And there was a card that if I would have put a monster, this dude would have been over with. But I pulled a spell, which is a huge, huge spell card. That spell card lets you um, pay life points to play for um, either level level uh, five or higher monsters. So if you pay a thousand, you you could pay a level five or a level six monster. You pay 2,000, so it's a level 7 or higher. So I attack him. I take him down to 1,700. He gets a card. There it is. The instant fusion. The one card that probably could have saved him. The duel. Thousand Eyes Restrict. So that would take you back to the original Yu-Gi-Oh! days. I was pretty nervous. But then I realized that you cannot attack on the first turn. The best thing he could have did right there was taking my monster. But since he used the instant fusion and Thousand Eyes Restrict, it would not let him attack on the first turn. So he played that card he basically think it's over but it is not <laughs> so he cannot attack me as you can see he just sitting there like oh my god i lost so his monster gets destroyed my monster gets destroyed as well that's unfortunate and then there it is the master hyperion um, I pull a tail, so it doesn't really matter. So I use the Asylum. And like I said, you could pay light points. It was actually a brilliant move. Overkill. Uh, but I just wanted to make sure it was done. That put me down to 300 light points. So that kind of hurt it. But that was basically the end of the duel. Right there. So what he does, that effect does, is lets you ban one monster and let you destroy one card on the field. So that's exactly what I did and ended the duel. But I hope you guys enjoyed that duel. Now let's get back to the card pack opening. Okay, so guys, so when you open it up inside, here it is. Here's the back of it. Pretty cool. I do like this. Um, what I like to do as well is I like to store some of my older cards in these boxes. But here is kind of like the dual mat that goes with it at the bottom. It has all the Egyptian gods at the bottom of it. It's actually pretty cool. You think about it. It's the mat. So here's like the back. It has Yugi, Joey, and Kaiba as well as like like I said, it's a mat, so you get to play your cards from there. I like this because it has, it has the Magician Gods. It has the Dark Magician, uh, Blue Eyes and Red Eyes, as well as uh, Black Summon Skull. Uh, there's uh, Exodia. I forget the name of that Exodia. And then Dark Magician, the Black Chaos. So that's actually pretty cool. I don't believe this side is actually not the side where you actually play your deck. But here's the side that you do play your deck. So like I said, you got five cards. Uh, you got your monster card zone. And then your spell card. And then the extra card zone and the field card zone. So if you guys never played Yu-Gi-Oh! You get... You get five monsters you could play up. Depends who you're playing with. You could use either the three deck, 
There are three monster cards or five. The, depending, like I said, on who you play with, you get uh, about five uh, magic cards as well. Only up to the you can only play up to five magic or spell cards. You get the extra uh, card deck, which could basically if your card could basically evolve. Um, you know, make it stronger. Uh, there's a lot of things like summons you could do. You can, know, there's special summons. Um, the, your your uh, extra deck, which your special summons. I mean, there's some cards that are special summon, but some of them are from your extra deck as well. So it's kind of like a lot of rules. If you guys want to look up the rules for Yu-Gi-Oh, I'm not gonna explain the whole Yu-Gi-Oh thing. I'm just gonna unbox them. But here is kind of like the main. Egyptian God cards right here. Um, pretty cool. So might as well unbox them. Or take them out. I believe when I have uh, shown off my uh, one of the first decks I had uh, or first boxes I did an unboxing on. Um, I believe I had some older blue eyes cards in it. A lot of my uh, Ghost Puppets, that was the last time I ever uh, shown those cards off. Um, I was actually hyped for those. A lot of newer, the from the newer movie, the Dimensional Link or whatever. What's that movie called? I don't remember. I think they're, they're Link cards. Something I really don't much know about. I watched the movie, I just don't remember the movie as much. But here is some of their card. One of my favorite dragons is the Red, red Eyes Black Dragon. So that's pretty cool. You have the the Dark Magician as well as the Blue Eyes White Dragon. This is the kind of the newer model. I do I believe I have un I showed off the older Blue Eyes White Dragon, the original one. Um here is and then here's the three Egyptian cards. You got the Winged Dragon of Raw. One of my favorite, favorite um, mythical creatures. I like him because he he it, his his attack and defense goes on your life points, so you could display you could give him as much life points. So if you're using twelve thousand, you could give him eleven thousand nine hundred ninety five, I believe. Oh no, I believe yeah, you could give him up to where you only have like five life points. Is it five or hundred? I don't remember. But that's how he works. Um, so for the Sky Dragon, it's the one that Yu Gi Oh get, uh, Yu Gi gets, like this card as well. And then here is, I uh, believe the Tormentor. I like it, the blue card as well. Here's the back of it. Um, this is the card that basically um, uh, Kaiba uses. So pretty cool. And then here is the other cards that go with it. They come and just kind of display. There's about two, four, six cards that go with it. They're all from different um, pack openings. So this one is from the Evasion of Chaos um, pack. So we'll be unboxing and taking these out as well. Uh, so here's the... Oh. Actually, I'm going to go like this. Since I've already seen the first one, here's the Witch, Doctor Chaos. Um, not really familiar with that card. There's a lot of cards I'm not familiar with because there's not a lot of decks that I use. Um, I am one of those original OG players, but here is Energy Drain, um, which is a trap card. Uh, I'm not familiar with that one as well. And let you guys see it first. Skull Mark Ladybug. I am familiar with this. When this card is sent to the graveyard, increase your life points by 1,000. Uh, be one of those sneaky uh, uh, guys who like to bump up your life points. Here's a card you could use. Um, not card that I, I use personally. Here is Recycle. During your standby phase, by paying 300 life points, select one non-monster in your graveyard. Uh, that's pretty cool. Here is Sophie. Sophie? Mm, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Is a fairy type. Uh, I am familiar with fairy types. I'm just not familiar with that one. 
Um, matter of fact, in the in the video, as you guys can tell, I did use a fairy deck. So uh, definitely, definitely want to have to look on in the future. Um, Matsa the Zapper. I wonder if he's part of the um, the six. I forget the name of those samurai gum um, deck. And then here is Manit Manicore of Darkness. Beast. He's a Beast Warrior type. Um, I have used Beast Warrior cards in the past. I'm not familiar with this one, but it looks pretty cool. So I might have to check out more Beast Warrior card decks in the future. Then here is Cannonball, Spear, sh Shellfish. I hate the Aquas. I oh, hate people who use Aquas decks. Uh, and then here's the last one of that. A hero emerges. Oh man, this I believe is um uh, is the card that I use. I believe Jaden Yuki uses. I believe he's part of of that uh, Jaden the original, um, you know, season two technically. You know, Jaden Yuki. Now here is spell ruler, so might be spell card heavy. In this deck, I'm not really sure. I haven't really bought Yu-Gi-Oh cards in a long time. But I thought, you know what? Let's try something different on the channel. I'm always doing different things on the channel. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys, if you are enjoying, please consider leaving a like, subscribing, and following. I would definitely, definitely appreciate it. Um, helps the channel out tremendously. Here is the first card of this deck. So, like I said, I'll let you guys see it first. I blocked her name. Sorry about that. Her name is Dark Witch. Uh, 1800 card. She is a, fi a level 5. So, not a strong card. Uh, unless she has power-ups. So, that card I would use. Here's the other card. Malavit, Malavit Nuzzler. I believe she's from season one. I do remember this card. Um, yeah, bring back memories with season one with the original uh, Yugi Moto Gaia Power. Here's another one I am familiar with. If you're using Earth Monsters, definitely help you out. But but there's a, here's a card that could boost you up, but also decrease your def defense. So that's not good. But if you're using if you're straight offense, it's a card you would use. And then here is Ikaboom. It's another one I am familiar with. This definitely is like a Gen 1 real heavy original OG. Uh, I know I just use a Pokemon um, thing for Yu-Gi-Oh! But Chorus of Sanctuary. Increased defense of all defensive monsters by real real good card if you if you if your defense first instead of offense then here is mother grizzly i do know this card um i like that one as well not a card i use a lot but definitely definitely pretty cool to see it ryu ran i do love this card this if you guys know gen one uh i'm just gonna call it gen one don't 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 leave it this like ryu ran this is a card that Kaiba uses. Um, definitely one of my favorites. He has a real strong defense, a real decent attack with 2,200 attack points. He, the, the only thing that sucks about him, he is a level 8 monster. Um, but it's actually pretty cool to see that magical labyrinth. The, uh, equip it to the labyrinth wall. If you guys know the twins, I forgot the name of the twins. It's been a while since I watched Yu-Gi-Oh! But they use this the magical labyrinth. That's pretty cool. I have pulled a labyrinth card, one of the labyrinth monsters. I forgot the name of them, but there's like three of them that go together and they, they all form together to make a real strong monster. And then Crab Turtle. He's a ritual card. You know, to pull, pull him, you have to have the ritual card to go with him, the ones that let you actually summon him and you have to to put two monsters together if you have a level eight it's one but if you don't have a level eight if you got two level fours or as much monsters that equals to level eight if you guys don't know 
Uh, you guys aren't familiar with Yu-Gi-Oh! There is eight levels. Some monsters have eight. Some some of them, like the Egyptian gods, have ten. Some have nine. Some has four. Some has one. You know? So, the ones, the level ones, are like real special monsters. Some of them are like special summon. You won't see as, as much monsters um, that has level one or lower. <laughs> uh, speaking of level one, here is a level one monster. And it is Outstanding Dog Marin. When this card is sent to the graveyard, add it to your deck and shuffle it. So it's a real strong card, especially if you're not getting good cards um, in your deck. Because before you start a duel, you post a shuffle in your deck. Um, at least when I grew up, you know. Um, so if you're, if you're pulling horrible cards in the beginning of your deck, here's one that can help you out. And kind of, you know, change up your deck for a little bit. Then here, here's another one. Falling down, I never heard of this one. Destroy this card if there's no Archer Fiend. So it helps out with the Archer Fiend deck. Um, you take 800 points of damage during each of your opponent's standby phase. So it's a pretty, I mean, it's a card that could damage you, but it's actually pretty good. Um, especially uh, if you, if, you're, uh, if your opponent has a card that you can't destroy... You play this card, take take control of it. You do lose 800 points each turn, but it might be worth it, especially if it's a card that, you know, that it's got kicking kicking your butt. Let's just say it like that. So here's another one. Battle card. Select one Archer Fiend monster on your side of the field to activate this card. Your opponent also pays the same light points that you pay for the selected monster. Wow. If this card is removed from field, destroy the selected monster. When the selected monster removed from the field, destroy its card. This card sounds like it is real, real strong. And here is one I would definitely use in a deck. So if you guys never heard me tell my um my uh, Yu-Gi-Oh stories before, I, I used to play a lot. So I used to hook up my decks with spells and traps. Um, growing up as a kid, not too many people knew how to play Yu-Gi-Oh correctly. A lot of people would just beef up their decks with strong monster cards. Um, I knew the meta before. Um, so, and, and by the way, this is the Dark Crisis um, pack. But anyways, so I used to hook up my decks with spells and trap cards. And, um, yeah, so I used to get them in trouble. I would have a few monsters as well, real strong monsters. And I used to win because we used to play for everybody's favorite cards. And I used to win a lot of cards. Send two spell cards from your hand to the graveyard. Select one spell card from your graveyard and add it to your hand. It's a real good card if you're trying to use. If you got some spell cards that are not working for you at the moment. And you need a spell card you use earlier in the duel. There's a good card you could use. Um, then here is this one as well. Fairy of the Spring. Add one equipped spell card from your graveyard to your hand. You can activate the equip spell card this turn. So it's a real good card. Um, if you're using any card that has that's used for like the uh, attachable spell cards to go on like a uh, add a hundred um attack points to your monster or something like that so pretty good card to use guardian baru oh man here's a guardian card i haven't seen a guardian card in years oh man if i could get i believe it's called guardian scythe i forgot the name of that monster but hey, that was a real card i did i love that card um, Guardian Bao, it's pretty cool to see him. Um, I hope he's in this deck. It'll be awesome to see him. Uh, Dark Scorpion, Chick the Yellow. Um, I do know this card as well. I believe it was when Yugi was in the cave and he was battling um, the summon. I mean the the Skull guy. That he was a kid. 
I forget the name of that kid. Bonds or something like that. I don't know. I'm telling you, my memory of Yu-Gi-Oh is long, long gone. But man, that's pretty cool. Dark Scorpion. Uh, here is the second to last one. Arsenal Summoner. Add one card that includes Guardian in its name. You can uh, add Celtic Guardian, Winged Dragon Guardian of Forces. So here is a card. It's a real strong card, especially if you need to pull one of those Guardians I was talking about earlier. And I hope this last card is one of that Guardian. So that's pretty cool to see that. And then the last card in this deck. Let's see who it is. Please, please, please. And it is not. It is Kelbic. A monster that attacks this card returned its owner hand. This is especially real good if you have a your opponent has a, like a special summon card that is is really destroying you, and you need to get that card off the field. Um, and if that card, if, if, if that special summon card attacks this card, it returns it to the hand, which means it returns it to the extra. There's the extra deck. So that person that you're playing with would have to do another summon the way he got the special summon out there. Unless it has an effect that it doesn't affect that. <laughs> Which there are cards that are like that. That was the thing about Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu-Gi-Oh! could be so frustrating. Um, you know, there could be cards that had no, no effect. Um, so, so if you have a card that has, that affects other monsters, there's cards that actually that deflects, um, affect monsters. So that kind of sucks. Then this deck is called Metal Raiders. So I wonder what's inside this deck. Um, here is the first one and I seen it just by unpacking it and it is Harpy Lady. So here's one that I also grew up on is Harpy Ladies, the Harpy decks. With my Valentine, she used a lot of the Harpies monsters in her decks. Um, pretty cool. To, it'll be pretty awesome to get uh, Harpies Pet Dragon. that would be pretty cool to see that. King of Yami Maki. And if I butcher these names in these in this in this video, I'm so sorry. You know, it might be some of your favorite cards that I butcher. Larvae Moth. So this is part of the insect deck. Which is the insect guy. Let me see if I can remember his name. Uh, yeah, I don't remember his name. But I do remember his face. He was the most annoyingest guy. He was the one in the original Yogi. That threw Yogi's Exodia monster um, cards into the ocean. Uh, weasel. Right? It's, uh, man, what was his name? It was something Weasel. I forgot. I forgot the name of it. It's been a while, like I said, since I've watched Yu-Gi-Oh! And I'm pretty sure that it's going to come back to me as soon as I end this video. Crawling Dragon. Pretty cool to see that. Pretty cool card art. Uh, here's Cybersaurus. So it's pretty cool. Blast Juggler, Two-Headed King Rex. Not the best a fusion monster you could put together, but with beefed up. Um, machine, um, uh, spell cards. It could probably, probably be a real good card to use if you like using machine type monsters. Oh, uh, there are definitely other better machine monsters out there. Medius Radiant, um, pretty cool card to see that as well. Definitely bring back some memories. Uh, Change of Heart. Here is a card that I would use all the time. I believe this is a banned card uh, just because it is really overpowered. So you basically select one monster on your opponent's side of the field, take control of that, select the monster to the end phase um, of your turn. So pretty cool to see this one. A lot of people uh, growing up as a kid, everybody had this card and Dark Hole. So it's pretty cool to see that. Uh, I definitely love that card because it just brings back memories. Um, Ancient Lizard Warrior. Um, eh, whatever. <laughs> and then the last card in that deck is... Please be a Harpy's Pet Dragon. No, it's not. <laughs> it is Rainbow Flower. Uh, this monster can attack... Your opponent's life points directly, but it doesn't matter because it is absolutely trash. 
So the last two decks, and there's nine cards per pack. So the last two is Blue Legend of Blue Eyes White Dragon deck and Pharaoh Servant. So I will be, I guess I'm, I guess I'll save the Blue Eyes White Dragon deck for last. So here is Pharaoh. Oh, hope you guys are having a blast because I am definitely having a blast unboxing all of these or unpacking all of these Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Here is the first card and that is Darkfire Soldier. I am really not familiar with this one. Uh, and here is this one which is Deep Sea Warrior. As long as Umi here is a card that, um, like I said, is the water it's a water, um, water card. Uh, I hate people who use water cards. I'm just saying. That's because I lost a lot, to, a lot of people who use water, water decks. Um, Mystic Probe. When a continuous spell card is activated, negate all continuous spell cards. I absolutely hate uh, continuous spell cards. So here's a good card that you can use against it. A lot of like something on the back, I don't know what it was, but then here is insect barrier insect type monsters your opponent controls cannot declare an attack. This is actually a pretty good card to use against Weasel, so <laughs> pretty, pretty good. You know, somebody using insects, you can stop them in their path. Then here is Gust. Um, you can activate this card when one or more spell cards are destroyed and sent from the field to the graveyard by a card effect. Your opponent controls destroys one spell or track card. So it's actually a pretty good card. It's kind of like... Um, it basically destroys um, your spell or trap card. So it's a pretty good card to use, especially if somebody is using a lot of spell cards, a continuous spell or a field, and you're trying to get that spell card out of there. Or if you have a opponent has a face down and you're a little bit worried of attacking, that's a good card to use. So here is another one. Prohibition. I am not familiar with this one. It does look familiar though. When you're when you play this card, declare. The name of one card, as long as this card remains on the field, the, the card card cannot be played. This card, which this card, which are already on the field before this card activation are excluded. So say if your opponent is using a uh, mirror force and you know that it might be a mirror force is on the field, you could play this card. Mirror force destroys any all your opponent's monsters that attacks and that are in attack position. So if you your opponent is using a lot of mirror forces, you play this card and that opponent cannot use mirror force anymore. So it's actually a pretty good card. Um yeah, so anyways, here is another one. Infinite dismissal. Uh level three lower monsters are destroyed during the end phase of the turn. That they are normal or flip summon. So if your opponent is like using his level threes. That are keep coming back. Those pesky level threes. Uh, that's a good card to use. Um, yeah. Um, seven completed. A machine type monster is equipped with this card. Increases its either attack or defense by 700. You cannot change your choice as long as this card remains face up on the field. It's a good card if you're using a machine type uh, deck. Real good card to use. Because it just boosts up your machine. And the last card of this deck. The last couple last cards have been absolute trash. So hopefully this is a good card. And it is Heartbeat's Brother. That is actually a pretty good card. It's not the Harpy's Pet Dragon I was expecting. But hey, I'll take it either way. Harpy's Brother. I'm not familiar with that one either. So I don't even know Harpy had a brother. <laughs> so here is the last deck. Hopefully we could pull something absolute amazing out of it. 
And once again, it is the Legend of Blue Eyes White Dragon. So if it has a name like that, hopefully it, it better be good. So here is the first card. And it is Mystical Sheep. So we're starting out to a real, real good start. Um, yeah, whatever. <laughs> then here is the other one, the Zover Rock. Oh, man. <laughs> You gotta be kidding me. Please don't not let it be this trash. One I chill dragon. Are oh, you gotta be kidding me? <laughs> oh, this deck is actually called Legend of Blue Eyes White Dragon. Um it's not living up to the hype. Let's just put it like that. Cage Musha of the Blue Fame is absolute trash as well with only attack points of 800 and 400. Oh, man. <laughs> wow. I should have... Uh, oh, okay. Giant Soldier of Stone is a card that I did use before. Uh, it's a real good card to start off the, 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 the deck, especially if... Um, you know, because uh, to start off a duel, uh, I should say, um, because, you know, you can't display your level eights or your level sevens or sixes in the first turn. There are cards that you could do it, but most likely you won't be able to display it. A lot of people like to play defense first. So here's a good card, um, especially with level fours that got eight, 800, 900 attack power, even 2,000, because this one has a defense of 2,000, so you put them in defense. And you're not really taking damage on the first turn, so that's a real good card to use. Uh, oh, Kaya, the Dragon Champion. This is definitely one I do like. So the heat is finally coming. Um, Gaia the Dragon Champion is Gaia the Fierce of Night and Curse of the Dragon mixed together to form Gaia the Dragon Champion. You can use this in a um, in a, a battle before. I forgot who was he actually used that in a battle with. Could have been Kaiba, uh, but it's actually pretty cool to see this. Uh, definitely, definitely one that I do like. So hopefully these last three cards that I have in my hand are at fire just as that one. Uh, and then here is M Warrior. So I probably just jinxed myself by saying that. So definitely not good enough. Here is the second to last card. And it is Forest. So another trash card that I really don't care about. And the last card. Hopefully... It's a card to blow my mind away. I'm pretty sure the guy here, the Dragon Champion, was the best card in his deck. And it is Uravi. So, he's a 1500 card. Absolutely trash. So, that was it for this whole unboxing video. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Or unpacking, as you would call it. Um, hope you guys enjoy this. Um, I did have, anyways, I had fun unboxing them. Um, pretty cool to see older cards that, that, that I did love growing up as a kid. Just brings back memories. Um, I think the best thing out of this whole, this whole thing was, was of course, getting like the older original cards. You know, the three Egyptian gods cards, um, that look looks absolutely amazing of course these are newer version of them um not the like the originals um even though they, they had, the originals have the same card art you could just tell these are newer versions and then here is like the red eyes black dragons and you know just the original big four or the big three um from eat from kaiba yugi and joey and then the three Egyptian gods. So that's basically what you buy these decks for. And then a cool, badass um, mats to go with it. Um, you know, if you are lucky enough to have know somebody who plays Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, you know, you whip out this badass um, mat and show them like, Hey, you know, you're a serious, serious player, but... Um, pretty hard to find anybody who plays Yu-Gi-Oh! nowadays. A lot of people stick with Magic. Um, and uh, what's the other one? It was Magic and... 
Pokemon. A lot of good ones. Uh, but anyways, guys, hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you guys have a wonderful, amazing day. Please consider hitting a like and subscribing. See you guys.